So my name is Vlad and I lead uh, IoT Lab here at Avast. And today I want to talk with you about benchmarking IoT security solutions. With that, there is MTSO IoT Working Group that focuses on solutions that are designed to protect IoT devices, which means a router with integrated security is okay, but smart light bulb is out of scope. So it is only the devices that protecting other IoT devices. <laughs> With that, there I want to mention uh, Pride Art. Uh, there's a router security test uh, done by IV Comparatives in 2020, and uh, uh, there, unfortunately, their copyright message is very long. So uh, I advise everybody to check it out because it has a few shortcomings as well as a few very good points. So uh, after this downfall has ended, you, you are advised to check uh, this report out. Now, let's talk about what is the current state of benchmarking on the or testing security solutions. You see, AV world or AV industry is quite mature. If you go to the MTSOP uh, pages, you will find quite a lot of interesting standards and there are best practices, there are guidelines, there are suggested methods, and there are also fundamentals. But if you look into the IoT world, uh, it is not as a mature of industry as classical AV. And so if you want to find something regarding uh, IoT security solutions and how to benchmark them properly, uh, you are destined to fail right now. This is why we at Avast IoT Lab had to come up with our own processes, guidelines and scenarios. And at this point, you probably have a few questions. First of all, why we are benchmarking ourselves? Well, obviously we want to be the best. We want to provide the best experience to our customers. And to do that, we actually need to identify our strengths and shortcomings. Okay, you say, why should others be doing the same? <clears throat> obviously to improve the IoT security market as a whole and ultimately to bring better and stronger products for consumers. But what if you don't care about any of this? If you have pushy nine to five jobs and some like you don't you don't care about any of this. Well, imagine a fictional example. Uh, it is 9 a.m. in the morning, you're at work and you both send you a message. Hey, there is a new standard for testing IoT security solutions. To which you reply, okay, thank you very much for the information. And then you receive the message. Well, we want to ship our solution and the test or benchmark is next week and we want to be the best at it and are we going to win right and at this point you make a very awkward face because you actually don't know but then <clears throat> there is a bigger problem at hand why such benchmarks of iot security solutions should be done by the third party obviously we want to have some independent and unbiased benchmark and we also have one small problem. The biggest flow of any in-house benchmarking is the input data bias, which means uh, you have something and you have some knowledge, but it is not perfect. And you know that you don't know something, but you don't know what you don't know. So let me give you a very simple example. Uh, the purple circle is the set of all active C2 or CNC servers in the world. And you imagine that you are competitor one. You have some knowledge and then you decide to benchmark others and yourself uh, using like uh, you select competitor two and three in this example. And you actually use the whole set as an input data to benchmark others. And in your perspective, from perspective of competitor one, the competitor two has coverage of only 5% and competitor three has coverage of 8%. So you must be the best, right? But in the real world, uh, competitor one has only 25% knowledge of what is out there and competitor two and three have about 22%. Of course, this is an extreme and overly simplified example, but third parties uh, testing and benchmarking would be able to use data from multiple sources as well as from the participants to create more compelling testing data set, which is very important. Then there is a question, what could be benchmarked in IoT security solutions? Obviously there is security of the device itself, uh, 
for example, are there any default weak protocols? Are there any ports or services? Is Telnet open by default? Never, never, please never do this. Well, this could be covered by any other benchmark that is designed to benchmark or test security of any device whatsoever. So this is out of scope. And then there are quality of life features. It could be user experience or user interface itself. And the thing is user interface, it's hard to quantify and it is also not objective. So it is also out of scope. What is in scope are the protection features. How are you able to actually protect other IoT devices on the network? I could talk about kill chains on simplified kill chains and what features could be created to actually stop uh, and block this kill chain. But let's have a, let's take a look at a very simple example of IoT kill chain in action. So uh, there is a bad guy that infects the device and this device also scans the internet, finds the victim's device and tries to break inside. Because such devices are very limited, it also like it sends the dropper and uh, this dropper tries to download the payload from another server once it is in this inside the victim's device. And finally, once this victim's device is infected, it tries to scan the whole internet and find other victims. So let's imagine you work uh, for the AV company and you found this C2 our loader server. And in IoT, obviously, very common that C2 or CNC server is also used for hosting the malware itself. So you decide to actually block this C2 server. You add it into your proprietary C2 database, which is super secret. And then you decide to benchmark others, to benchmark your competitors uh, using this database. So you select one address of C2 and you try to access this command and control server using all other solutions. Two of them immediately block this request and they pass the test. One of them actually returns the response, so you get the payload or command from CNC server, and another one blocks this payload. So you have three solutions, three of them passed, and one obviously failed. Congratulations, you wrote your first very, very simple benchmark that is designed to somehow benchmark your IoT security solution. So do this on many more databases, on better data sets, on scale, and you have a proper benchmark. But what? If, let's take a closer look at the one solution that failed. You don't know why. Maybe there is some guy that sleeps at work. Maybe they had a very bad day. But what if you want to make your benchmark more complex? To do that, you select this solution that failed and you request the same payload, the same connection to the same C2 server again. Then you wait another hour and you try to access it again. You wait another hour and uh, by the third hour, this solution actually blocks the connection or responds from the C2 server. It finally passed. So at this point, you know that it took them about three times to block this particular C2 and uh, you have more granular data. So again, do this on scale with much more data with many devices and you can have very proper time to detect benchmark. Now, uh, who will benefit from such benchmarks? Obviously, there are companies. By knowing our strengths and weaknesses, companies can focus on what is important improving their capabilities in blocking the actual threats that are out there, by which the whole industry will benefit. And most importantly, this will benefit end consumers or our users by having companies competing in such benchmarks, as well as having clear picture of capabilities from different vendors. Now, to the main question of this presentation, why I'm telling you all of this. You see, I want this industry to be better from our benchmarking in-house, I know that despite very similar packaging and similar features that are printed on the box of the solutions, some of our competitors are actually pretty good at their ability to block IoT threats, while others, well, their ability to block something is indistinguishable from luck. And to know which is which, we would have to all come together and create and adopt benchmarking standard 
and execute it to see how we all compare to each other. This is it for my very short introduction into IoT benchmarking.